Hey guys, thanks for joining me. About a year and a half ago, I reviewed the EcoFlow Delta II, and at the time, I concluded that it was the best-in-class power station in that 1,000 watt-hour capacity class. And four or five months ago, I reviewed this, which is the new Power 1000 power station from DJI, which also happens to be in that same 1,000 watt-hour capacity class. And I'll leave the links to those two reviews below if you're interested in checking them out, because I am not going to be rehashing all of the test clips that I did in this particular video. But instead, I thought it might be interesting to do a detailed comparison of these two units to give you a sense of their relative strengths and weaknesses, and see if maybe one of them comes out slightly ahead of the other. Which will be pretty interesting, uh, particularly given the fact that despite their fairly similar specs on paper, these two power stations actually have very significantly different design approaches. So let's jump into the details and see how they compare. And maybe let's start with what these two power stations have in common. Both have industry-leading five-year warranties from a well-established company. Both use lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry that is rated to maintain at least 80% of their original rated capacity, even after 3,000 full charge and discharge cycles. That's pretty typical for lithium iron phosphate, and that gives them both an effective service life of over 10 years with daily use. And the rated battery capacity on both of these units is an identical 1,024 watt hours. Okay, and what about, uh, let's say, wireless phone charging? Well, that's an easy one since actually neither of these units has wireless phone charging. And in the unlikely event that that feature is a must-have feature for you, well, you'd probably want to skip both of these units since they don't have it. Okay, let's get into how these units are different. And if we take a look at form factor, this is an area where these two units do obviously take very different approaches. The DJI Power 1000, for example, takes a somewhat more conventional approach, and it has all of its inputs and outputs uh, right here on the front of the unit with no connections on the back or the sides. Now, the EcoFlow Delta II, on the other hand, puts all of the USB ports on the front panel, and then all of the other inputs and output ports are here on the rear panel except for the battery expansion, which is right here on the side. Now, some people prefer this port layout, other people maybe not so much. And I think it kind of depends uh, on your specific space logistics where you, you know, commonly plan to locate and run your power station. So say for example, if you were going to be keeping the Delta II maybe uh, in the back seat footwell of your van or your SUV, having the ports on either side like this might actually be a bit of an advantage to something like this. But if you were going to locate it, say, in a cabinet or other storage compartment where you really only have access to one side, you might actually find the Delta II's port layout to be fairly inconvenient. So which design is best? Well, probably not surprisingly, I'm going to call that a wash because I think it's wholly dependent on your specific circumstances and your personal preferences. Okay, here's an important one, AC power output. Now, given the fact that they both have a rated 1024 watt hour battery capacity, and the fact that DJI actually named this the Power 1000, it might be tempting to assume that they probably have, you know, about a, a 1000 watt AC inverter. But like many assumptions, that would be incorrect. The EcoFlow Delta II is actually rated for a continuous AC output of 1800 watts, which is a pretty solid spec for a unit in this capacity class. And it'll briefly let you pull up to 2400 watts for a number of seconds before the overload protection finally kicks in and shuts you down. And then it'll also handle a momentary peak surge of up to 2,700 watts. Now in comparison, the DJI Power 1000 is actually rated for a continuous AC output of 2,200 watts, which is about 25% more continuous power output than the Delta II can provide. Now the Power 1000 will also let you pull about 2,600 watts for about 30 seconds before the overload protection kicks in, and then it has a very impressive peak surge capacity of up to 4,400 watts which again is about 60% higher than the peak surge capacity of the Delta II. So in the total AC power output spec, the DJA Power 1000 wins pretty decisively. But in a nod to the Delta II, uh, while both units do only have two three-prong AC receptacles, the Delta II does give you four additional two-prong AC receptacles, which might provide added convenience for some people. Okay, let's talk about DC outputs, starting with the USB connections. The Delta II has a total of six USB ports, while the Power 1000 has a total of four. So just based on the number of USB ports, the Delta II clearly has the advantage. But there's a little more to consider there because two of the Delta II's USB-A ports are the much older style low power 12 watt ports. And then the other two are a little bit more contemporary 18 watt quick charge ports. Whereas the two USB-A ports on the DJI 1000 are actually capable of outputting 24 watts. 
And while the Delta II's two USB-C ports are both PD100 watt capable, which is a solid spec for sure, the DJI Power 1000's USB-C ports are both rated for a whopping 140 watt output, which is currently the highest speed Type-C charging spec that you're gonna find, though eventually we're going to see Type-C outputs that are gonna be approaching 240 watts at some point in the not too distant future, just not right now. So while the Delta II does give you a couple more of those older 12 watt USB-A ports, all four of the USB ports on the Power 1000 are using the highest output spec currently available. So which of these guys wins the USB port matchup? Well, it kind of depends on whether you value quantity over quality. It's the Delta II on quantity, but it's the Power 1000 on quality. Okay, let's talk about solar charging capability. Now I know that many of you may never use solar charging, but I also know that many of you absolutely will. And this is another area where the design approach on these two units is very different. The Delta II has a built-in MPPT solar charge controller, and it's capable of taking a max of up to 500 watts of solar input through a single XT60 connector here on the back. And that's pretty respectable spec for something in this capacity class. Certainly it's enough to allow you to fully recharge the Delta II in around four to six hours of good sun conditions. And this is kind of where it gets uh, pretty interesting due to the modular design of the Power 1000. It can actually take up to 800 watts of solar input, but that MPPT solar charge controller is actually not built in like it is on the Delta II. It's actually an optional $59 add-on. And to get the 800 watt max spec, you actually would need to buy two of those MPPT charge controller modules. And by the way, the charge controller modules do come with the hardware necessary to mount them here on the side of the Power 1000, so you don't have a separate thing to keep track of. So that's kind of handy. At least they thought of that. But the point is, if you don't plan on or if you don't need to charge with solar, you might actually be able to save a little money by skipping the solar charge controller entirely. Maybe you can just add it later if you decide that you then need it. And don't worry, we'll get into all the pricing details here in a bit. So which unit wins the solar charging category? Well, again, it kind of depends on how you intend to use these units. I definitely like that the Delta II has built-in solar charge controller just in case you need to use it. But I also really like that I can customize on the Power 1000 with up to either 400 watts or 800 watts or maybe zero watts if I don't really need it. Okay, continuing on the topic of charging, let's talk about AC charging. Both of these units can charge with a simple AC power cable, so there's no charge brick, and they can charge up to 1200 watts, which is certainly fast enough to get both of these units fully recharged in just a little over an hour. And both the Delta II and the 1000 will let you charge at a slower rate when you're not in a hurry. And that allows you to reduce the charging stress on the battery cells and allows you to help maximize overall unit service life. But how they provide that variable speed charging is very different. Now, the Delta II's default charging speed, I think it's 600 watts, and to make it charge faster or slower, you do have to use EcoFlow's mobile app, and then you connect to the unit with your phone and dial in the charging speed that you want. Now, on the other hand, the DJI Power 1000 actually does not even have a mobile app, though they do have a Windows app that you can use for firmware updates. But instead of having to use a mobile app, uh, DJI has decided to just give you the functionality for changing your charge speed with a simple switch in the front of the unit. And while I do appreciate the charging flexibility that you can get in EcoFlow's mobile app, I have to admit that from a practical everyday use standpoint, I do find it much easier to simply flip a switch on the front of the unit than to have to get my phone out, fire up the app, maybe I have to log back into the app, try to remember my password after I discovered that there was an update and they logged me out, then I have to go into settings. You get the point. Now, don't get me wrong, there is definitely some value in having mobile app control, but sometimes the actual added value of the mobile app control in everyday use falls a bit short of the anticipated value. And some things, especially like setting the charge rate, are just more convenient in the form of a mechanical switch on the, on the unit. This is just one of those things that you don't really figure out until you've, you know, you've been using these kinds of products for a while. Okay, now how about 12 volt charging from your car? Both units can definitely do that, but kind of like the solar charging, the Delta II does come with a car charging cable in the box. Whereas with the Power 1000, it's an optional add-on cable. Now it's, it's only about 22 bucks if you don't buy it as a bundle, because they do have a bundle for that. But regardless, you do need an extra cable to car charge. And like the solar charge controller, that uh, cable connects into one of these SDC, two-way SDC connectors here on the front of the Power 1000. So for convenience purposes, I'd have to give the advantage for car charging to the Delta II, simply because it uses a standard cable for this, and they do provide that cable in the box as a standard accessory. So what about 12 volt DC outputs, say 
12 volt 10 amp car socket or maybe DC 5521 accessory ports. Well, once again, I do have to give the advantage on that particular point to the Delta II because the Power 1000 does not come with a 12 volt 10 amp car socket built in. Kind of like the solar and car charging options, there is a separate optional adapter cable that you need to buy, unless you again happen to get it with their car bundle. It is not an expensive option, but it is an extra cable to keep track of. Now, because these two-way SDC ports here on the front of the Power 1000 are so versatile, DJI actually does sell an adapter cable option for 12 volt output out to an XT60 connector so that you can easily patch this into an RV or van 12 volt system to provide 12 volt DC power to other appliances without having to plug them all in individually into the power station directly. And I think that's probably a 30 amp limit on that adapter cable, but I'm still in the process of trying to confirm that. And if I need to correct that, I'll put that here in a caption if necessary. So that's actually a pretty cool capability that you typically only see on larger capacity power stations. And so that part at least is definitely an advantage in the DJI Power 1000 over the Delta II. All right, I think we're on the home stretch here. How about battery capacity expansion? Well, this is pretty straightforward. The Power 1000 does not offer battery capacity expansion and the Delta II does. And they do that via this connector here on the side of the unit. So it's a definite plus that the Delta II has this option, but it's a, it's a fairly pricey option at around 80 cents per watt hour when you do add those expansion batteries. And still, if you need it, you need it. So the Delta II clearly wins the battery capacity expansion spec since there's no real option on the Power 1000 for that. Okay, let's talk about operational volume levels. How loud are these units when they're running? Now, my guess is that a fair number of people would probably not even think to take this into consideration. But for many people, especially if you're planning to use these in a fairly enclosed, quiet space, this could actually be a very important consideration. And I'll say that the DJI Power 1000 is legitimately one of the quietest power stations I've ever tested. DJI actually claims only 23 decibels, which I find a little amusing since even a quiet library will register about 40 decibels. And even in my uh, little test space that I normally test these in, when there's nothing else running, uh, that space registers about 36 decibels. And for all intents and purposes, it's completely quiet. But this is probably the biggest difference between these two units because the Delta II is definitely not a particularly quiet power station. So whether you're discharging or charging, even at a modest, say 600 watts, the Delta II registers a much higher than average 57 decibels on my sound meter. And charging at a max rate of 1200 watts on this guy will in most cases increase that volume to a fairly intrusive 63 decibels. So here, take a listen to this clip. And for comparison, listen to the Power 1000 charging at exactly the same max rate of 1200 watts. Now, this is not to say that you'll never hear the Power 1000's fans, but you'd have to be running the unit in an extremely hot environment or maybe discharging at over 1200 watts before those fans will even kick in. And even then, the highest level of volume that I've ever observed on the Power 1000 is about 56 decibels, which is still quite noticeably quieter than the Delta II is, even at a modest 600 watts charge and discharge, and very significantly lower volume compared to the Delta II when this thing is uh, at max discharge. Now, of course, fan noise while charging or discharging is not going to be an issue for everyone, but for many people, this could actually be a deal breaker for the Delta II. All right, before we get into pricing, let me address build quality. I think both of these units are actually very well constructed and I have zero complaints on that front with either the Delta II or the Power 1000. Now that said, there is no question when you get your hands on these things that the Power 1000 has a tangibly more rugged build. It does weigh in about two pounds heavier than the Delta II as a result. And I think there is no doubt uh, that that is largely due to the heavier gauge ABS plastic uh, housing on the Power 1000. So I, I do have to give the Power 1000 the advantage in terms of ruggedized build. Okay, let's compare pricing on these two units. And keep in mind that pricing can and does frequently change, and it might vary depending on whether you're looking at DJI and EcoFlow's websites or whether you're looking at their listings on Amazon. So this is a bit of a moving target, but at the, at the time that I'm producing this video, EcoFlow's website lists the Delta II at $9.99. There apparently, at least for now, are no sales coupons. While DJI's website 
currently lists this at $9.99, but it does have a sale coupon that when applied, brings the price down to only $6.99. And at that $6.99 sale price, they are currently also throwing in the 12 volt car charging adapter cable uh, option that is normally something you have to buy, but they're throwing that in for free. But to more fairly represent the price comparison with the Delta II, let's price in the other options that we need to match what you get with the Delta II. Now you can buy what DJI calls the car power combo, and that currently sells for $748, which includes both the car charging cable and the 12 volt car socket accessory cable. And then to match more closely with the Delta II's default spec, we'll add the 400 watt, a single 400 watt MPPT charge controller option, and that adds another $59. And totaling that all up, you're still looking at $808, which is about $190 less than what the Delta II is currently listing for on EcoFlow's website. Now, in all fairness, EcoFlow does often also run similar sales pricing on the Delta II, but like I said, at the time that I'm producing this video, that's just how the pricing is shaking out on their respective websites. So in the final analysis, which power station is the best one for you? It'll probably come as no surprise that I really do think it's based on your specific priorities. Now, I do think the Power 1000 is a very compelling option, especially if you don't mind the modular design and having to potentially keep track of a couple extra adapter cables. On the other hand, if you do need battery expansion and a mobile app is a must have for you, well, I think the Delta II would be the better option for you. Either way, I think both of these are excellent options in that 1000 watt hour capacity class. And I seriously doubt that you would be disappointed with either one of these units. Unless of course you need something that is super quiet, in which case you definitely wanna go with the Power 1000. And of course, if you happen to be a DJI drone owner as I am, or maybe you plan to get a DJI drone someday soon, I do think it's an absolute slam dunk to go with the DJI Power 1000 with the fast charging options that this unit gives you for those newer DJI drones. Okay, I think that's a wrap. If I've uh, missed anything in the video that you still have questions on, please do let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to try and answer you. And per usual, I'll put links to both units in the description below so you can go check them out for yourself if you want. I hope you found something in the video helpful in some way. And if you did, I'd very much appreciate it if you'd do me a favor and click on that like button below the video for me. It's a simple gesture and it's super easy to forget, but it really does help out both of us. For me, it helps the video get a little bit more visibility. And for you, well, you know, maybe you'll sleep a little better tonight knowing you did your good deed for the day. But seriously, I do thank you for taking some of your valuable time to watch this video with me. And I do hope you'll consider joining me for the next one. Until then, have fun out there.